Hi, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio station KE0OG, and hello, Augies. Today we're going to take the promised journey back into Easy NEC and see what a simple trapped dipole looks like. And we're going to do something that's a practical trapped dipole, one that does both 40 and 20 meters. We're going to discover that it's definitely a viable thing to do. We'll actually come up with the dimensions for a trap and we'll see how it all works. So we're going to get as far as the modeling part today and then in a future video we'll actually make one and, and trim it down for real conditions and, and build a real trap and test it. Okay, uh, so let's go through the charts and when we're done with the charts we'll get back together. So this week we're looking at the idea of a two band a trapped dipole a set specifically in this case for 20 meters and 40 meters which are the two bands I suggest you investigate first once you get your general class license. I show them being held up by trees here uh, my trees really aren't tall enough to do this. You could use poles or anything. So the the red part over here uh, is the actual antenna. This The black part is just ropes that we've got over here. This is your coax. And then there are the traps. Okay. A trap is a name for a device that uh, will cause this thing to appear electrically only this long for 20 meters and electrically uh, see the entire dipole with its insulators here and here on 40 meters. This is a very conceptually attractive idea. You've got one antenna that will do two bands, okay? And the th again, the thing about trapped antennas, it does not use the entire antenna for 20 meters, it just uses the part in the middle. This is what a trap consists of. Okay, This is the part right here that's resonant on 20 meters. And then the entire thing is resonant on 40 meters. Uh, the trap consists of a tuned circuit. Now, you'll recall from previous discussions that a tuned circuit will resonate at a certain frequency. And in the resonate, resonating, the voltage goes really high uh, across the trap and the current goes really low. And since uh, antennas are basically current-driven devices, uh, if you don't get any current past this point right here, then B is essentially decoupled, okay? Decoupled from the antenna. So uh, traps can be made many ways. Let's just take a look at uh, one way uh, that we can do them. This is off of NC4FE's website. This is off of VE6YV. Uh, they're actually different. Uh, this is one that is from W8NX that happens to be in the ARRL antenna handbook. Uh, basically, it's a coil of coax okay and the inductance comes from the windings of the wire all right and the capacitance comes from the inherent capacitance that's in coaxial cable and so the idea is to balance the number of turns uh, with the needs to get a certain capacitance out of it uh, this is uh, a better illustration here we have the wire coming in here uh, soldered to the center conductor okay which winds around and around and around and around like this and then uh, the center conductor comes out over here it's here attached to the shield of this over here which again goes back and the shield goes round and round and round and round now you can attach either this point or this point to this right here you get a higher impedance connection if you take uh, uh, if you take the shield and connect it okay because it's got to go around and around then around and around again and you get the capacitance again from the capacitance between the shield and the inner part if it's 15p 
picofarads per foot and you need 30 picofarads, you need 30, you need two feet of uh, coax. It's really all there is to it. And yes, there is a very easy way that you can design this. This coax trap design program I've seen in a variety of places. As far as I can tell, it tracks back to this one. Uh, VE6YP is the one, I think, who put this together. You need to fill out the frequency you want the trap to be resonant at. The form diameter comes from uh, the little piece of PVC pipe or whatever else you use. The coax diameter comes from the coax itself. It's an inherent quality of the coax. And then the capacitance per foot is an inherent uh, quantity in the coax. You can look these up in tables. Uh, the system also has several uh, types of cable in here that you can choose from. Now what you want to do is make the trap be resonant kind of at the general frequency we want to use because that way if it's resonant at 14150 it becomes a extremely high impedance at that frequency and and you've got the 20 meters around that are not going to go any further than the trap now this is one way of doing traps there are other ways of doing traps where you uh, do it at non-resonant points but let's just look at this one because it's uh, good for our purposes next we look at what happens inside easy NEC okay Easy NEC is a piece of modeling software that I've already uh, talked about. Now, I found a model on the web for a 10 and 20 meter trap. Well, I wanted a 2040. So I did a whole bunch of rearranging in the wires. I changed the wires to the right lengths. Now the loads, the RLC here, uh, that I took these values right here um, actually come from um, this right here uh, these numbers here's your L and your C 1.5 microhenries 84 picofarad so we go to that and see that these are put plugged right in and I want the trap to be resonant 14 megahertz okay now this particular model came with a transmission line it was only 50 feet well if you put this high enough in the air for a quarter wave for uh 20 meters you got 66 feet right there uh getting back back to the ground so i put in 100 feet um and it's 50 ohm uh, coax they give it a velocity factor of 0.82 which is kind of on the more along the kind of velocity factor you might get out of a foam uh, dielectric cable the uh, velocity factor if you had one of the old polyethylene type cables be about 0.66 but what we're going to do is go ahead with that and and see what happens this is very interesting okay this is the dipole from here to here and the traps are here and here now at 40 meters in the center of the band okay you see that the entire antenna is used without any lumps or bumps where those uh, resonant traps are it uses the whole antenna at 7 megahertz now a different story over here at 14175 the part of the antenna that's being used is from trap to trap okay and that's nice and resonant there's a tiny teeny 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 amount of current that sneaks by but you can see that what's doing the business is the 20 meter part whereas over here what's doing the business is the entire antenna now let's take a look at uh, some important things I put this at 33 feet, which is about a half a wavelength at 20 meters. So it's only a quarter of a wavelength at uh, 40 meters. So we can look at this. This is 40 over here, okay, at uh, seven, 7 megahertz. 
uh, it's two to one or less across the entire band. That's great. It really is great. It's nicely resonant. And here I tweaked the values so that we could get this thing resonant in part of the 20 meter band. Now this is a general rule in these types of antennas. It's a little harder to get the SWR down where you want it. It's below 2 to 1, okay, only for that portion of the band. However, it's less than 3 to 1 for much more of the band and your tuner in your modern radio can handle up to a 3 to 1 SWR, can get you in tune right in there. If you were to just tweak some lengths slightly, you might be able to move the minimum point over to here and thus increase the 3 dB bandwidth. But the 2 dB bandwidth on 40 is very nice. Okay, now the next question is how well does it radiate? So again, we're at 33 feet, which is about a half wavelength for 20 meters. And we see the typical dipole pattern uh, that that's at the correct wavelength. We get um, a beam width down here. See this beam width right here to here. This is considered the 3 dB beam width. And uh, it's quite a bit. It's very nice. Low uh, angle of radiation. It's, it's almost as good as uh, putting a quarter wave uh, vertical out there. Now on 40 meters it's a different story. If you take a look at the beam pattern, the 3 dB down is right here and here and all your power is spread out across this entire area. But note that in general it wants to shoot straight up. Okay, that's the center of the beam, whereas the center of the beam over here is like this. Now this is kind of like what we might expect because we saw in a previous video that half wave is the, the best height for a dipole and is not so good here. So this antenna actually, since a lot of 40 meter communications, especially during the day, uh, is relatively local, like within four or five states of you, three or four states. And so you get the NVIS, which gets spread up like this, and you hit the ionosphere, you can uh, get a pretty wide coverage, including right near home, whereas this one will shoot up and over um, because it's going to go up and, and hit the uh, ionosphere over there somewhere. All right. Now let's, let's just go ahead and move it up to 66 feet. Uh, 66 feet is one half wave for 40 meters, so that's this right here. Here we see the proper dipole pattern, okay? And there's your three degrees and your entire beam. The beam width is 34 degrees, okay? And um, from 13 to 48, okay? You get a very nice radiation if you wanted to do some 40 meter DXing or something like that. Now look what happens over here on the 20 side. Same antenna, uh, but now it's just using the part in the middle because of the traps. This shows that the beam width goes down further. But we see this double pattern that we've seen before. All of this up here takes energy, okay? and it takes energy away from going out here. What we see over here is a beautiful operation for 40 meters and uh, somewhat less optimal operation at 20 because this is a full wavelength high. And in that previous video, we saw that when we went up above the half wavelength part, this primary lobe came down with height, but then this secondary lobe starts to generate. If we were to go up higher than that, this lobe would come down, okay, and you'd get another lobe up here. Now, the problem with that is that you start spreading your energy around. 
Okay, so you you like to have your dipole at a half wavelength high. Now the problem is you cannot, in a trapped dipole, have it at the optimum height for every band at the same time. So you, you're going to compromise and get the one you want. Now uh, let's look at what I have. I have 20 foot poles out in the backyard, all right? And so on 40 meters, this is what I've got. It shoots straight up and a beam width in here. This is where most of the energy is going, most decidedly straight up, okay? Now, if you want to get out in this direction over here, let's draw a line and then see how much it's attenuated, 10, 20, 30, it's almost 30 dB, it's dB low. So in terms of going out, say, for a DX station, it, there's really very, very little energy going out, uh, this one. So, And whereas uh, even on the 20, you've got a uh, shooting straight up like this. 20 meters is more a DX band, and you're getting a bandwidth out to here. So... This actually is only about 3 dB down going in this direction, whereas this point corresponds to this point right here, okay? You can see that your antenna points in an awkward direction, but hey, you know, it works. If this is what you can put up, it works. You can work lots of stations with this. So there we have it, a trapped dipole which may load very well and look very good uh, if it's uh, up high, like 33 feet in this case. You get a beautiful 20 meter dipole plus a 40 meter dipole that behaves like it's pretty low and it shoots straight up. If you get it less than the 33 feet high, you start compromising both the 20 and the 40 um, uh, distribution of energy. So what uh, we'll do in uh, an upcoming video is we're going to take a look at uh, actually building this thing, a 40-20 trap, put out some uh, dimensions there for the trap, uh, actually test it, and uh, that'll be a great uh, secondary video, which would be a follow-up to this. Now, uh, next week, uh, we're going to take a look at a new uh, thing that's been released by MFJ to enhance their cobweb antenna from 20 through 10 to 40 through 10. I've already received everything, got all the parts and everything. Got the parts laid out on my desk, got the actual cobweb antenna laid out in my back deck. We're going to uh, show that video in early January, next week, next week, on a, a couple days after Christmas. I'm going to show a video that is about uh, the Volunteer Examiner program, something that you can become part of and enjoy. So, first of all, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, or Happy Holidays for whatever holiday you may be celebrating during this holiday season. Loretta and I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and Happy Holidays the world around. And uh, please click like, please subscribe, uh, please check out the tip jar and Patreon. Patreon got a little off the rails there for a moment, but they're back to doing it properly now. 73 to all of you Augies out there. Happy New Year.